I tried very hard to do or Orwellian prose. We talked about this, didn't we? Um, man, I didn't talk about this either. I swear I talked about this. Tell me if I remember. Wrong. Some of you are shaking your head. Other ones seem to be not shaking their head. Um, so there is a famous essay by George or Orwell. You can look it up if you want. If you just or Orwell in window page where he describes what he tries to do is writing a story so that the prose is like a, a, a pane of glass. And that you see right through it to the story happening on the other side. You know, those are people. Yay! Um, so the glass is not there to obscure. And in that, he tries to make every, the words as distracting, as, human, as, as undistracting, as translucent as humanly possible. Um, other types of prose are described, described like stained glass windows, where there's this gorgeous, beautiful prose that you are looking through, and you can still see the story on the other side, but the stained glass window is coloring this story in very interesting ways, and different, changing your interpretation. A lot of literary fiction will try, not all. This is basically the concept of poetry. You look through a gorgeous stained glass window at a concept, which then changes the way you view that concept. Um, and, and some literary fiction tries to do this as well. Um, and so I try for this. Um, it's, it's much more of a craftsman style than an artist style of writing. I prefer it, I, um, but I like reading both of them. Um, they can both be very, very good to read. I pick this one. Um, there are those who, um, who advocate um, a sort of uber prose. Dave talks about this, which is a melding of the two. Um, that is invisible when you read it and gorgeous when you pay attention to it. Tolkien is usually the one mentioned as, um, as being able to do this um, to an extent. Um, I don't know if I can give you advice on how to do this because you basically have to master both of them. Um, and they both take a lifetime to master and then combine them somehow. Um, there are people who are very good at this. Um, I stick to trying this, though I will sometimes do a little um, more flowery start to, a, a, um, to a, a chapter, where my description, I allow a little bit of stained glass into my description to set that particular chapter, and then I go, um, then I go window pane. Um, and you'll see this used very often in genre fiction. You see it used poorly also, where this is where we get into what we call purple prose, where the, it's over-described. It's someone who's not good at description. Because remember, good poetry is not about flowery language, it's about precise language used correctly. Um, and you can use some of these more conceptual, um, uh, flowery is the wrong term, but you know, beauty, awe-inspiring language. Some of you are actually quite good at this. Um, right at the beginning, and then I will transition into window pane. Robert Jordan did this too. Um, like if you're trying to go for like a mood of wonder, like with your magic systems, with your world, etc., do you probably want to go with more beautiful prose? You could certainly add a little bit. I mean, there's, there's, you, you could say that there's like a whole continuum between here. Um, and certainly you could go that direction if you wanted to. Um, it, the worry is that both of them are hard to do, and so mixing them is even harder. But if you're naturally good at it, or if you do this consciously and say, here's what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to go towards more flowery, and I will see this sometimes. Um, they will do things like they will have a flowery narrator, and again, flower is the wrong term. They will have a stained, little bit of stained glass narrator, and then they will try for window pane in all the action, dialogue, um, and storytelling. And so they have this narrator who kind of comes in occasionally. Um, you, guys, um, you guys played like the game Bastion? Game Bastion kind of tries this a little bit and, and does it somewhat successfully. It has a narrator on top of the game who's speaking in these, this very colorful um, sort of dialect-filled um, language. It's, it's not really this, because what that's doing is it's giving it a really strong voice. But I could see you giving a strong voice to a narrator who speaks in this sort of way and then tells a story this sort of way. Um, but I think it's something to be aware of and to experiment with, honestly. Um, if you're naturally good at descriptions that are beautiful, good metaphors, um, and your, your sense of, um, of poetic styling, you know, you can use words with right sounds to them in the right places and have the right rhythm to them, then you may want to move somewhere along toward, the, um, toward this side. It can work. All right. Let's talk about business. 
once again, as I'm, as I'm erasing this stuff, experiment with this. Learn it for yourself. Practice it. Pay attention to it in writers you read and see which ones are writing prose where the prose draws attention to itself versus those who in, it, try to write in a way that the prose does not draw attention to itself and see which styles you like better and which ones work for which stories. Um, there is no right on that continuum. There is just how good you are at what you're trying to do.